Okay, so we're back in. Uh, this is a tutorial series on how to create Pong in Unreal Engine 4. Right now we're going to set up the ball functionality. So the actual functionality for how the ball works in this game. Um, it's not too bad. It's, there's a little bit to it, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. So we're going to go ahead and just grab, uh, we'll save everything with Control S, and then we're going to go to our static meshes. First thing we're going to do in static meshes is grab our SM ball, and we're going to have a look at it. So if you look at this, uh, it's just the static mesh you have from earlier. We want to put some collision on this guy. We're going to put a box amplified collision on it, and then we're going to hit save. Go back into the main or back in the main scene. Go to blueprints, right click. I'm sorry, you can just go to static meshes. Right click on the uh, SM ball, uh, asset actions, create a blueprint using this, and we're going to call this BP ball. This is going to be the blueprint that handles the functionality for the ball. So we've got our scene set up, we've got our static mesh in here, and if we double click on this, it's got the collision, you see the little green line. Good. Go back to BP ball. What we want to do now is we're going to go over to the event graph. So this ball is going to be controlled in the same way that the other one was with physics, and we're going to be setting the uh, actual, uh, we're going to add force or velocity to it, depending on how it's going to be uh, used. In this case, I think we're just going to be using set physics linear velocity. Uh, which is a, a node, if you type in, well, actually I don't know if it will come up yet, um, it, it's going to basically just be setting the velocity to exactly what we want, instead of using the uh, add force like we were in the paddle, it kind of just adds the amount of force. So this, this one's a bit more programmatic in terms of the physics. So, first thing we want to do is we're going to enable physics, because we need to use physics on this actual object, it kind of makes sense to, basically. <laughs> we want to enable gravity, or disable gravity, and one other thing we want to do is you want to simulate hit events. Uh, well, well, actually, I think we don't actually need that. We're going to be using overlap events. Since this is going to be a trigger object itself. So this is actually going to be an object that when it contacts something else, it will overlap with it, and then it will uh, fire some kind of functionality based on this little function here called the event actor begin overlap. So we've got some of those settings set up. Let's see if there's anything else we need to change in here to trigger this and that. Looks great. Okay. What we want to do is before we do anything, we want to give this a little bit of an initial velocity to start off. So when you know Pong starts, you see the ball the ball spawns in the middle, right? And then after that ball spawns in the middle, it just kind of starts flying one direction left or right. And it needs some initial velocity. So let's go ahead and just make that happen. First thing we're gonna do is we'll go to uh, this little tag here, this little uh, exec pin, execute pin. I'll we'll type in set physics linear velocity. And this is for the static mesh. Could have named that something else. And in here, we're just going to put in some values. So what's the starting value? Well, let's see. Let's put 2,000 in the y-axis. Let's see how that looks. We'll go to set file or compile and save. And we'll go back to the main scene. We'll save once again. And go ahead and just grab from your blueprints folder. Grab your BP ball. Grab into the scene. And then let's go ahead and just zero that out. Take your uh, your background reference. Just slide that guy out of there because we don't really need that anymore. At least not for now. And hit play. Oop, did you see it? It actually works. It flies. It flies to the left. It looks great, right? Let's see if it's uh, actually on target. Looks like it's in the right spot. Everything's going good, right? Let's go ahead and just pause. We'll eject from the view. And you can see the panel is up a little bit too high, right? Why is that up there, you might be asking. Well, that's because this is up a little too high. So let's go ahead and just put this down to zero. And you go, oh, okay, so now it should actually work, right? It should do something. Play, pause, eject. They're all aligned with each other, right? So then you say, okay, let's hit the frame skip. What will it do? What will it do when it hits it? Nothing. That's because we haven't set up any of the functionality for it to actually collide with it yet. So if we go to the BP ball, we're going to have uh, some functionality that will actually make it, when it collides with something, to do something. So we'll do on begin overlap. We'll drag a thing off here. We'll just do print string. We'll change this to collision. And this will just let us know if it collides with something. The question is, will it actually tell us? Collision, collision. So that's saying it's hitting the paddle, and then it's hitting this wall. Pretty good news in that front. All we got to do is go back to the ball. And now that we know that we're getting collision, we can change how we want it to do depending on what it hits. So when it hits a paddle, basically what we want it to do 
is we want it to reverse its direction. But more so than just reverse its direction, we want it to take into account the velocity of the paddle moving up and down. For example, when I'm moving this paddle up and down and the ball hits it, um, if I can do that, I'm sorry, hold on a second. When the ball's coming in, right, and it hits this paddle just like this, it should just bounce basically right off or a little up and down movement. But when the paddle's moving quickly and I hit it, you know, moving this way, the ball should actually take some of that velocity and bounce off it. So as this ball comes in, hits the paddle, and the paddle's moving up, it'll, it'll take some of that velocity, and when it hits the paddle moving this way real, real fast, it'll make it fling up this way, right? Yeah, I think you know what I'm saying, hopefully. So how do we do that? First off, let's just get it reversing direction. So the easiest way to make that happen is we're going to first check and see if we're hitting, what are we hitting? We're going to see, are we hitting the paddle? Are we hitting the left boundary, the right boundary? Are we hitting the enemy? No, we want to see if we're hitting our, our actual paddle. So you can dra drag a pin off this, and you can do a cast to BP paddle, pawn right. A cast is basically a check. So it's saying, is this what we hit, what we overlapped with, or collided with, is it, is it the paddle pawn, you know, the thing on the right here? And if it is, then do stuff over here. If it isn't, then continue on to something else. So in this case, it's saying, is it, is it actually hitting the paddle pawn right? Let's print out another string and see if it's actually hitting it. We'll type in hit paddle pawn right. It's always good to sometimes make checks like this. And if you notice, it's not. That's interesting, right? So let's have a little look. It's going through. Before we were just getting it when it made any kind of collision. Interesting though now, right, that it's not getting anything off of this paddle pawn. So you might be saying, why is that? That's a little weird, right? Let's find out why. Go back into here. The answer is because we haven't plugged this wire in. You need to make sure that the overlap, uh, event actor begin overlap wire is actually plugged in. So this is the other actor you're colliding with. Now let's see what actually happens. Hit paddle, pawn right. And if you notice, it only printed that once, which means it's casting. It's making sure that it's only when it's hitting the paddle, not when it's hitting the boundary or the uh, right goal. That's good stuff. Okay, moving on. We're going to start with a basic reverse of direction, because that's all we really need, right? We just want to make sure that we can reverse the direction of the ball. Let's do that in a very simple, uh, or very pretty straightforward kind of way. We're going to just go ahead and um, get the physics linear velocity of the ball. I should make it uh, pretty, pretty straightforward at the very least. So we're going to get the physics linear velocity. This is getting the actual velocity that you know the ball has. So you know what direction it's moving. You know it's it's going to be this right here. So it's going to be moving in the y-axis at 2,000. Although it could be any value, it's just going to get the current one. Take that, and we don't have to plug anything else in here. And we want to take that value, and we want to pull off of this, and we're going to break that value into the three separate values. So we got our, the physics of the actual object uh, when it hits the, the paddle. And then what we want to do is we want to take, uh, we want to make a vector. So we're going to make a vector. So this is, this is pulling off the three values. We're going to put it back into one of these. But we don't want all three of these. We only want, I'll just make a, make a vector. We only want two of them. We want the z to come in. No change to the z when we hit a paddle. No change to the y when we hit a paddle. I'm sorry, uh, no change to the x when we hit a paddle. But what we do want is we want that y to change, because y is going to be this direction. We want it to reverse. So how do we do that? Pull off of this, do a times, or a multiply, and then make it float times float. In this case, we're just going to do it by negative 0, or a negative 1. Negative 0 would be interesting. And that'll just make it so that the y reverses. After we've gotten our initial physics velocity, we split it up into its three values, we reversed the y, we made it back into a vector, let's plug it into a new uh, physics velocity for the actual object. So this one gets the physics velocity, and this one sets it. And we'll plug in the execution pin, drag these guys down, and this should, this should work. So this is, once again, just to reiterate, uh, when the actor overlaps something, and it's checking, it's able to check if it can overlap because we have simulate physics on and it can generate overlap events. 
and it's triggered. What it's going to do is you're going to see is the object at overlap with a paddle pawn right. If it is, get the current physics velocity of that object, uh, of the ball, what it currently is. Take that and make it in, uh, split it into its three values and its x, y, and z. Reverse the y so that way it starts going the opposite direction. And then turn it back uh, into a vector and plug it back into its velocity. Now well, it sounds like a lot maybe, but let's see what happens. There you go. So you just had your first uh, collision with a Pong ball inside of Pong. Uh, and you say, okay, cool, look at that, it actually works. But now, you see maybe some of the issue of what I'm talking about. When I actually hit play and I move this paddle, and don't actually miss, let me see if I can do that. I move up like that, it should, it should make it fling the ball up, right? Like that's how the game is played. You can kind of fling the ball, I think it's called a, a smash or a crush, when you really hit it hard. But it's not doing that, right? It just kind of hits it and goes straight off every single time. So this is where the second part comes in. This is where we're going to add the uh, physics of the paddle into the physics of the ball. That way it moves with it. So it's not too bad, but it requires a little bit of reorganization of what we got going on here. So let's just pull these guys here. And we'll pull these down a little bit. We'll move this up. And the first thing we want to do is as soon as we get that other object and we make sure it's that it's the, uh, the paddle pawn, let's get its physics linear velocity. So we go, okay, and we make sure we get to plug in the actual other object into the target. Now, we're going to take the actual other object, or we're going to take the, the paddle's physics velocity, we're going to drag it up here, we're going to break its vector, the three con con constituent components, and then we're going to make those into, uh, we're going to pull off from the x. So this is the y-axis that we're controlling. This is always just going to reverse. But we want to control the x, because that's, that's where the ball is moving up and down. So we'll break this right here. We'll take the X from the paddle. We'll pull off from it, and we'll put a, uh, we'll put it right back in to the X over here. Looks good, right? Let's see what happens. Oh, there it is. Now you can control where the ball goes just by moving the paddle. If I hit it just a little bit. Well, it depends on the speed of it, of course. But depending on how the ball is coming in, you can hit it, and if you just tap it a little bit like that, you see it doesn't move as much. But if I really am moving, it really gets it going far. So it works quite well on that front. So there you go. You have your basic, uh, you know, collision with the paddle. It takes in the velocity. It takes in its uh, reverses direction. One last little tweak we can do. This is just a, a little feature, to make it a little more fun. Slide a little bit of randomness in here, because we don't want it to hit the exact same way other time, otherwise people can just kind of keep the paddle there and it'll just go back and forth. Slide a little bit of randomness into the mix. So we're going to add a plus value here, we'll break this connection, plug it right into here, and we're going to create a right click and click random float in range. And this should be something like maybe a negative 1000, oops. To 1,000. We can plug that back into here. And we'll see what this does, because this should give us a little bit more of randomness, even if it just hits straight on, which is what we want. So let's see what happens when it hits straight on. There it goes. So even though it isn't moving, it, it kind of just flings it off a little bit. And when the paddle's moving very quickly, it's not that noticeable. And that's good, because if you, you don't want it to be, uh, get stale by just having the paddles hit straight dead on if they're not moving. So there you go. You got some paddle movement, you got some velocity going on, uh, and it's actually reversing direction. We're casting to a different object uh, on its collision, and we have it working. So that looks pretty good to me. We're going to wrap up the video here. In the next video, we're going to work more on uh, this type of material. We're going to set up uh, some of the other collisions and how the ball uh, handles those, and then we'll move on from there. So thanks a lot. If you appreciate this video, liked it, uh, I would appreciate a subscription or a uh, like, uh, any comments you have. And uh, I also have fan funding, so if you want to support this channel very further, please let me know. Uh, you, you can do that. I really appreciate your uh, watching this, and see you in the next one.